Proverbs chapter 7. My son. Okay, and that's Solomon writing to his son. God writing to us, his children. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. That's why every time I see it. <coughs> that expression, my son, appears 23 times in the book of Proverbs. Keep my words. Now, wouldn't that be proper for God to say, keep his words? And yet, what are the two things that Christians don't? They don't keep the words and they don't pray. Lay up my commandments with thee. Now, God's given us commandments. Love thy brother. Hate not your brother. Love your enemy. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Live right. Keep my commandments and live. Want life? Now again, the book of Proverbs is in the law. Solomon writing to his son. You didn't keep the law. You didn't keep the commandments of God. We learned last night, if you committed adultery, that was it. You went to hell. The more commandments you broke, the more sacrifice you would have to, to bring. And you got to remember what Leviticus said. Done ignorantly. Of no knowledge. And my law as the apple of thy eye. Well look at that. The apple of the eye. It's in the Bible. It's favorite. Cherish. Bind them upon thy fingers like you would with a ring. We already read before. You put about your neck like a necklace. A chain. Put it on your fingers like it was a ring. Write them upon the table. That would be tablet today. What we use. That little pad of paper. On thy heart. So keep. Write it. Get it into you. Thy words have I hid in my heart. That I might not sin against thee. Say unto wisdom. Thou art my sister. And call understanding thy kinswoman. Relationship, understanding, and wisdom to family. Close family. As your sister. As an aunt. Cousin. That they may keep thee from the strange woman. And Psalm is going at it again. We're going to go into the rest of the chapter about the strange woman. Early part of chapters of Proverbs. Look what Solomon's telling his son. You better look out for women. Now this was written early in Solomon's life. Solomon didn't take heed. If this was written in the midst of Solomon's life. And toward the end of his life. Solomon's taking the life of his thousand wives. And the worship of other gods. Son. You better pay attention to what I have to say. And he's very serious. If there's one thing the Bible speaks about, it's a father to tell his child about women. Not the school system. The school system will go against the Bible and say, well, we'll give you safe sex. They ain't safe sex. It's adultery and fornication. A father is to warn his children about certain women. Oh, you know, we all get together. And, you know, you can't have prejudice against these people. You can't have prejudice against... You know, women's rights and all that. No, there are women that you are teaching children. You're not to associate with them. You're not to have anything to do with them. And especially you're not to date and you're not to marry them. As far as a Christian, you have no being marrying an unsaved woman. Now again, if, if she's unsaved and she comes to know Christ as her Savior, glory to God. But that's not most of the cases in... The Christian church, and I don't mean building, I mean in the body of Christ. They think, oh, I'll change them later, and they don't. Fathers must give warning to the children, you better watch out who you hang out with. You got to watch that person, you got to deserve that person, you got to look at his parents. Parents are most important. I mean, don't think, you know, you, you know, you, you let your daughter 
you know, and he's always late and stuff like that. Then you wonder they get into a relationship, and then they're all the, the whole family now is always late. Well, I'll correct them. No, you won't. So the strange woman from the stranger which flatters with her words. There's that flattery. There's that, that mouth is full of, of, of honey. It's sweet. Again, for Solomon, for a Jewish for a Jewish man of, of the tribe of Judah, the strange woman would be definitely a Gentile, which Solomon does marry Gentiles. It would also be, as far as Solomon and his son, Judah going to marry Simeon, Levi, Dan, Issachar, Benjamin. They were not to marry outside of their tribe. What would be a strange person to the Christian? Someone who's unsaved. I'll tell you who would be strange to marry as a Bible-believing, born-again Christian, a Catholic, a Protestant, charismatic, uh, Anglican, atheist, agnostic would be strange to the Christian. From, for at the window of my house, I look through my casement. And that's a little window. Solomon is sitting in, in his throne. Solomon is sitting in the castle. And he's looking out the window in Jerusalem. And beheld among the simple. And we read about the simple ones in Proverbs 1. I discerned among the youths. That's the first time youth shows up in the Bible. And the only other place is Isaiah 40 verse 3. Run that youth back to the word simple. A young man. One man he saw. Void of understanding. Well, evidently, verse 4, that man did not call understanding his kinswoman. He didn't call upon understanding. In the world today, oh, let's ask the kids what they feel. Let's ask, you know, there's, there's nothing that aggravates me most. It's for a newspaper to print a, a opinion page, or whatever they call it, written by a six-year-old, written by a 12-year-old, written by a nine-year-old. They have nothing to say. They don't have understanding. Passing through the street near her corner. This strange woman has a spot. I grew up as a child. They were called prostitutes. On the street that I grew up and things have changed, but it used to be called Bank Street, New London. As a little boy growing up, I would pass, I would talk to these women who were prostitutes during the day. I had no idea what I was doing. I did not have any idea who they were. But it, I remember there were certain women that were in certain spots. They were prostitutes. They were hookers. They were whores. They were committing adultery and fornication. They had their corner. And when I grew up as a child, when you talked about prostitutes, you know, the women on the corner. That, came, that comes out of the King James Bible. He went the way to her house. That's the simple and the youth who has no understanding. Warning. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. When is prostitution, boredom? When is it most active? When are the, the topless bars open? When are the, the sexual pleasures in the evening? It comes out of the Bible. You're hardly ever going to see one of the sexual bars of adultery and fornication open during the day. Now there may be some, but most of my jury them are at night. And behold, they there met him a woman 
with the attire. That's the first time attire shows up of a harlot. She looks and acts like a harlot. Well, guess what she said? Uh, uh, Jesus said it simple. If a man looks upon a woman to lust after his heart, he's already committed adultery. He didn't sleep with a woman. He didn't get undressed with a woman. He didn't get naked with a woman. He didn't have sexual relations with a woman. But he was thinking about this woman. She looks like a harlot. What? Guess what the Bible says she is? She's a harlot. You know what God says about a woman? Imagine a woman going into church. I've heard churches say, well, you know, they just, you just let them be. Look at me. <laughs> Isn't it cute coming? We're not to, you know, to criticize how they dress. The Bible says if she looks like a harlot, the Bible counts her to be a harlot. You know how many women who have been Baptist wives preachers, wives, that I have been embarrassed for them to bow down in front of me. You know, they bend over, I've been embarrassed. That's whoredom. Who would in their right mind would wear something if they had to bend over and pick something up? And I, I don't know, this is 2020. I'm talking about the 70s and 80s. But the 70s, 80s, when I grew up, like I said, the women there on Bank Street, and then they moved them off. I mean, you looked at that woman, you knew that it's, that's a prostitute. Once I learned who they were, that's a prostitute. Subtil of heart. You know where that first word shows up? That shows up in Genesis 3, 1, the serpent that came to Eve. So that woman that dresses the attire of a harlot, is likened to that serpent that came to Eve and deceived her. I mean, Paul says, as, as Eve was deceived by the subtlety of that serpent, there is that woman there. And that is the outmates of, of verse 9 and 10. That is the outmates of America. I was watching a video today of a man. I, well, I don't, I mean, I know him, but I don't know him personally. But he's preaching on the streets of, uh, I would believe, England. One of the UK cities. He had the double-decker buses. You know, I was looking at the people rejecting the gospel and not paying attention like they do in America. You know, they didn't dress as much as American women. They don't have, they didn't dress enough to show anything. I mean, some did. I even saw some Muslim women, I mean, you know, by the headdress, and, I mean, they were Muslim. But they didn't dress like the American women. Woohoo, here I am. Now, I don't know what a prostitute wears today. I don't want to know. She is loud. That's an interesting characteristic. She is loud. And stubborn. She won't listen. I mean, she's going to be stubborn. She's not the mate for a wife because she won't obey the authority of her husband, as Paul tells us that our wives are to be. She's to be in subjection to her husband. If she's stubborn, her feet abide not in her house. She's almost like Lot's wife. God and the angels showed up. Abraham said, Sarah, make some make some bread, make, make some cakes. And he went out and got, got you know, the, the fatted calf and all that. When, when the angels came to Lot's house, Lot made the bread. Lot made the food. Where was Mrs. Lot? If you got a woman who won't, who's loud and won't, who's stubborn, and she won't stay home. That's not a woman to. Bye. See you later. Now I, I had two wives. That stayed home. And took care of their home. Thank God for them. Lisa was never stubborn. And she was definitely not loud. 
her home with her house with her family. She didn't go out to bingo night. She didn't go out to any, only time she went out and only time Tracy went out is when we went out together as husband and wife or as family. It amazes me down Florida. Now, this is not so in Connecticut, but it amazes me in Florida. People will, sh the, the, the husbands will show up in a car and then the wives will show up in another car. That, that, that's common down here in Florida. And you got it all messed up. You know, Florida is a messed up state. You got the husbands over here, you got the wives over here. They're not together. And then they, I even had them come in. Well, you don't need to come with the men in. You need to wipe. No, 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 no. We need to get them together, stay together as a family. You're the ones that are wrong. I've had wives down here for, uh, I'm not going to make them nothing. I'm not going to make them lunch. I'm just... Man, woman, you don't know what the Bible says. Let me move on. But that's stubbornness. Now she is without. Without what? This says she doesn't stay home. She's with, she's outside. She's now in the streets. Okay. Another word we used to call it. We used to call it street walker. I know. Maybe my words have. He's really old. What? What did he say? That's what we used to call it. And lieth in wait at every corner. There's that corner again. She works the street. This woman is a whore. This man, this young man that Solomon is watching from his window, has no business being with her. In the eyes of a little boy, I would see a car drive up. And I would see some of those women getting that. I didn't know then. I know now. I know where they're going now. She caught him. She caught him. And I'm trying to look at look at what we read yesterday, chapter six, verse twenty six. By means of a whorish woman. Oh, oh, oh whorish. There it is. Somebody probably hates what I'm saying right now about whores. I don't care. This is Bible. A whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. I used to think you said bought. It's brought. The adulteress will hunt for precious life. Verse 13 of our chapter. She caught him. I think we read something about snares and traps. It's not last night, the other night. What's the snares and trap of this whorish woman? The makeup. Making myself beautiful. The eyelashes. The skimpy dress. Catching your attention. And there are Christian women who paint themselves up and, and glamorize themselves with makeup. and It's wrong. I'm going to say this now. I'm going to get it off my chest. But when you face paint at church, you're preparing the children for mascara and lip gloss and whatever junk they put on. You are telling those children with the face paint, yeah, it might be a clown. It might be a dove. It wasn't a dove in the Bible. You're wrong. And all that. But, you know, if I can go to church and get my face paint, I guess I can put a little lip gloss in. And you forgot. And you forgot. And you forgot, Jezebel painted her face. When you do face painting in church, you are liking yourself to Jezebel. But I like it. The kitties like it. God don't like it. Oh, Stanley, shut up. I got that off my chest. She caught him and kissed him by Judas. Like Judas? You know what Judas did when he kissed Jesus? He said, listen, it's the middle of the night. I mean, there's no neon lights. There's no street light. And, and he told the, 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 the squad that came with him to, to come and take Jesus. 
there's going to be t at least 12 men with him. And three men really up close to him, Peter, James, and John. It's dark. The one you're to grab is the one I walk up and kiss. That's the one. Take him, I think he says, peacefully. You got to watch out for those Judas kisses because it even happens with women. <laughs> she kissed me, my first kiss. I wonder how many of those first kisses led to death. We'll get to that in a moment. And with an impotent face. You say, that's a big word. I don't know what that word means. That means shameless. She doesn't even blush. She has caught this guy. She's nailed this guy. She, she, and she's not even blushing. It's like, oh, she loves me. What does Solomon say? It says, this guy is simple, he's young, and he has no understanding. And this has all happened in one night. This is not a week. This is not weeks. This is not a month. And said unto him, I have peace offering with me. That's found in Leviticus. You know what that means? That means this woman is religious. She goes to the temple. Read in Leviticus. There's an offering. There's the burnt offering. There's the trespass offering. There's the wave offering. There's the heave offering. There's the sin offering. There's the peace offering. She's got penance. I pay for my sin at the temple. God will forgive me. She's religious. This day I have pay, paid. That's the first time paid shows up. I paid my vows. Confession. We're going to look at one vow maybe coming up that she does not. But she's religious. I've made my peace offerings and I've paid my vows. Remember, she's trying to kill this guy. It's going to be the ends of death. And what kills me is Solomon is looking out the window of his house and he can hear this conversation. I gotta wonder why he didn't stop it. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, you liar. You catch anybody to come down the street that would give you a time. Who knows? Maybe they were trying to get a little boy in New London, Connecticut. You know, just talk to him and be nice. I don't know. I thought they were just being nice to a little boy. I don't know. Who knows what God protected me from? Diligently to seek thy face. You liar. She's a liar. Oh, dear. You're just, oh, you're just so, you're just so manly. Oh, I'm just so brave. Oh, you just. Well, I came here for you. This sucker is buying it. Don't say sucker. And I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry. With carved works. Imagery, idolatry. She was religious, remember? Peace offering. I paid my vow. And I got imagery. And I've got the kiss. I don't know who did it. I've got the kiss statue right there. I got the Buddha down. I even have the Jesus on the cross. Well, you wouldn't have that back then. But today's... I'm guaranteed that there's a prostitute somewhere today. She'll take you home. And on her bed or somewhere in her house, she's got Jesus on the cross. And she probably goes to Mass. She may even go to a Baptist church. 
Matter of fact, tell you the truth, we were in a Baptist church one time, and, I, and my wife and my family and, and the pastor asked us to bring this woman home. She wasn't feeling well. Come to find out, he told me later on, that woman was a prostitute. How dare you put that woman in my family's car? He waited it afterwards to tell me. We didn't take her all the way home. We dropped her off the nearest street, main street. We don't want our car to be seen by her house. Damn be that pastor that put a, that put that prostitute in our car. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry and card work with fine linen of e Egypt. You're not supposed to go to Egypt. You have no business doing it in Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Myrrh was used for death. Myrrh was used for perfume and embalming fluid. Trying to make the house smell well. Anybody knows that there is a smell after sexual intercourse. You guys perfume up so you can't have that smell. You'll see why in a moment. Come. Let us take our fill of love. You ready for this one? You see that love, L-O-V-E there? That's the first time love shows up in the Bible. It has to do with a prostitute. What is it? What is it? First time a word shows up in the Bible, the context. Thank you. The first time a word shows up in context, love first shows up in the Bible with a prostitute. Don't you just love the Bible? I just like the Bible. You know, when they sing love on the radio, all they're doing is doing boredom. They don't love you. How dare they lie to me? You know, you know who I am. They're saying, I love you. No, you don't. Shut up. That's why I don't listen to the radio. Let's fill our love unto the morning. You know what her love is there? <laughs> Adultery. That's not love. That's lust. I think we look at chapter 6, verse 25. Lust not after her beauty. Jesus said, whosoever looking upon the woman to lust after her in his heart has committed adultery already. Paul says in Romans, lust is coveting and coveting is lust. You see, the Bible takes and nails it down. Bang, 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 bang. See, the world calls it shacking up. The world calls it the woman of the evening. Verse 9. He's having a relation. Get rid of his virginity. He's with a whore committing adultery. That's what he's doing. Oh, that's not nice. Let us solace. Let us cheer ourselves. Let us comfort ourselves with love. That's the first time love shows up too in the Bible. The only time that word ever shows up again is Song of Solomon 7.12. For the good man is not at home. Now when you look up the dictionary in that one, the good man could be a husband or it could be the master of the house. Now husband, we know who the husband is. She's married, it's adultery. If it's the master of the house, she's either the daughter a female relative of, that's under his control, or she's a servant. It doesn't say husband. That's the first time Goodman shows up in the Bible. Matthew 24, 48. I'll show you a, a remarkable, the rest of the times it shows up in the Psalms, but let's, we'll take Matthew. Everybody loves Matthew. I don't. I like Luke and John. Matthew is Jewish. There he goes again. I don't like it. Don't 
turn me off because I teach the truth. It's Matthew 24, 48. And my Bible is sick. You take me, you take me forever. 24, 48. I know where it is, but my Bible's sick. That's not it. Matthew 24, 48. That's not it. Well, let's try Mark 13, 34. That wasn't it. Might be another record I'm looking at. Might not be the one I'm looking for. Let's try Mark 13, 34. Could be a whole entire another Mark 13, 34. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that was... Alright, this is another... This is not the reference. But Master is found in, in the Gospels. Uh, excuse me, good man. And it's a reference to the devil. And it's talking about the second advent and the rapture of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, as the good man in the house would have known when the thief, Jesus, would come. The good man is not home. So it, it's either a husband... Or it's definitely, she's under a man of the house. If it's her husband, like the dictionary says, she's adultery. She's not at home. Like she's supposed to. He's gone on a long journey. Upon the first wife. Though Potiphar wasn't on a long journey, she still take advantage of it. I don't think Joseph was the only one. He has taken a bag of money with him, which means he's going to be gone for a while. This woman definitely has no place in your life. And will come home at a day appointed. There's a time he's coming home. I know when it is. And notice how she don't tell him when it is. With her much fair speech, she causes him to yield. She'll say anything and do anything and blow in his ear and just kiss him and lovey dovey him. And he says, putty in her hand and get ready for adultery. In the Old Testament law, he'd be done. And flatters with her lips. We saw that the other night. She forced him. You know what that forced is? She practically rapes him. She enticed him so much that it's no more he wants to. She is making him do it. He goes after her. Straightway, that's the wrong straight gate. He's headed straight to the road of hell as an ox goeth to the slaughter. There's an ox, and it, that ox is just going to the butcher. Ooh, what's that guy over there sharpening those things? Or is a fool to the correction of the stock? That's public punishment. Once this guy commits this sin of adultery and fornication, and it's made known public, remember what we read in chapter 6, verse 32 to 35? When this man comes home and finds out what he has done to his wife or his servant, Remember what the law says, the adulterer and the adulteress. Till a dart strike through his liver. I'm going to assume that that would be fatal. 
as a bird hastened to a snare. That's a dumb bird. Oh, look, a guy with a net. I'll fly to it. <laughs> oh, God. That's a dumb bird. Didn't we read, I mean, we're up to seven chapters. Didn't we read somewhere, you know, where the bird flees the, the snare, the trap? This bird, hoo -hoo. This guy's cuckoo. And knoweth not that it is for his life death. End of story. Paragraph. Hearken unto me, Solomon, now therefore, O ye children. He's done talking to his son. He's talking to anybody that will listen. I got to wonder between 23 and 24, did Solomon go and try to stop that? I don't know. I just, sometimes I read my Bible and I think extra. Oh, ye children, attend. Show up. Be the attendant to the words of my mouth. What words of his mouth? The whole chapter. All chapter 6. Every time he speaks about adultery and fornication and that wicked woman. Let not thy heart decline to her ways. Bear, listen to me about that woman. And we've had two chapters at least about her. I think three. Go not astray in her path. I like one of my instructors would say when he says, he says, make sure you know you get the point. Make sure you go not ashtray. You don't have no business being in an ashtray. I like that. Don't not ashtray her path. For she has cast down many wounded. Can you name one in the Bible that she's done? How about Samson? Did not the harlot Delilah or her name is Dandelion Did she not get paid for the downpour of Psalm? Yeah. They said, we'll give you, I think it was silver. And then that night, that when she finally discovered what his strength was, they brought her the silver. Now, Samson may not have paid for her. Samson showed up with harlots. Samson may not have paid her, but the Philistines did, and she was a harlot. And you know what she did with Solomon those three days? Oh, lover boy. How, how strong are you? Oh, show me those muscles again. Led him to an ox to the slaughter. Led that dumb bird into... Oh, cut my hair. Yay! Hey, that's what the devil said to Eve. Yay, as God said. Many strong men have been slain by her. Me strong. You stupid. Strength means nothing when you're dealing with a whore, adulteress, and a fornicator. Don't think you're a protein and you're working out and you're irons and I'm a he-man. She's a she-woman. She'll take you down. I think there, there was a worldly song. I think it was called Evil Woman. Something like that. It's been a long, long time. Her house. Wait a minute. Let's look at verse 8. Passing through the street near her corner, he went the way to her house. Verse 11, she is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Her house is the way to hell. 
You go into her house, she doesn't even stay in her house, and it brings you to hell. Why? Adultery in the Old Testament of the law. You commit adultery with another man's wife. There was no sacrifice of sheep, bird, oxen, goat, cakes, oil, or anything. Her house is the way to hell. Oh. He said hell. Solomon believed in hell. Jesus believed in hell. Going down to the chambers of death. Where you put your dead body. Now if you want an interesting study sometime. Get yourself a Bible concordance. And look up all the places in the Bible where hell and death or death and hell show up together. One of them places is this adulterous harlot, fornicating woman, who went out and caught a man, and men, and those men today are in hell burning.